morning, everyone. Uh, welcome to Manadu Bawateg campus of Seven Generations Education Institute. Ogima Benez Indigo, Brentukini Indijnakaz. I'm Brentukini, I'm the CEO of Seven Generations Education Institute. I'm honored here, it's an honor here uh, being here today for this announcement. Today we're here to listen to our First Nation communities and to support the needs of our communities. The residential school system has oppressed and tried to eliminate the language, culture, traditions, and identity of our First Nations people. The missing and murdered Indigenous women and girls are a result of the residential school system. This is one example of the harm that this system has done. But it's also time for an opportunity to develop an education system that reflects our communities and is grounded in the language and traditions of our communities. A system that values our elders and knowledge, knowledge keepers, an opportunity to look at things differently and to make change. The First Nation communities have so much to offer, not only Treaty 3 area, but Canada and the world. I think it's important that we work hard to make this change now. I'd like to take this time to introduce our elder, Howard Kopanis from Whitefish Bay First Nation. Oh, bonjour. Good morning, everyone. Just before I go into the ceremony, I'd just like to say, you know, coming together today here is a very, very special day for the children that have gone through the hardships, the families. I'm coming here today to work together and go forward in balance amongst one another and amongst creation. It's a very, very powerful thing for all people. So I'd like to say again, miigwech, and I'll speak in my language, and also I'll share a children's song for you that I've been passed to the people. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, bojo. Yo, Shukuminahakoevines. <laughs> Bishkutsi <laughs> Chipmeto <laughs> Oh, 
Miigwech, Elder Howard Copenis. I would like to take this time to introduce Premier Doug Ford. Well, good morning and, and thank you, Brent, for the introduction. And I wanna thank you, Brent, for the 30 years of service with Indigenous education. Thank you to Minister Rickford, Elder, uh, Elder Howard Copenhagen, nice. Chief Grand Chief Kavanaugh, Chief Mark Hill, Teresa Stenlon, Councillor Region 1 of the Métis Nation of Ontario for joining me today. Like all Ontarians, I was heartbroken by the tragic news that a burial site had been found at a former residential school in Kamloops, British Columbia. We grieve for each of the 215 children that lost their lives, as well for their families and the communities that they were taken from. This is a moment to recognize the painful legacy of Canada's residential school system and of the damaging, lasting effect it has had on survivors and Indigenous communities. We know the news from Kamloops has deeply impacted survivors and their families, and that Indigenous people are hurting, including here in Ontario. We're here to support them. Indigenous leaders and Ontarians are seeking meaningful reconciliation. And while we're prepared to work with the federal government, we simply cannot wait any longer to act. To support survivors, their families, and Indigenous communities. That is why Ontario is committing $10 million over in the next three years to identify, investigate, protect, and commemorate residential school burial sites and cemeteries. Our government will work in collaboration with Indigenous leaders to ensure the process is Indigenous-led and respects the wishes residential school survivors and their families and the affected communities. And we will see this work through right to completion. We will also ensure appropriate mental health supports are available. There is painful but necessary work ahead and we must confront what happened for reconciliation to be achieved. It's important for all Ontarians to be aware of the dark history and painful legacy of the Indian residential school system. So that is, that we can work together to build a more equitable Ontario for Indigenous people. Now, I'll hand things over to Minister Rick Megwich.
Well, thank you, Premier, and I want to thank you for your leadership and your confidence to proceed with this important announcement uh, today. I also want to thank my Cabinet and caucus colleagues as we rallied over the past couple of weeks to respond to one of the most horrific events uh, as part of Canada's darkest chapter in its history. I want to thank Elder Howard Kopanis for getting us started today in a good way. And I appreciated the opportunity earlier this morning to speak to the Chiefs of Ontario and let them know um, what we're announcing this morning. Brent, thank you. Uh, Brent Toucanet is hosting us here with his amazing team at Seven Generations. We have a COVID appropriate announcement here, but he's got a, an amazing tech team. Um, and this institution really is the face, the complexion of a modern uh, Indigenous education and Brent you've led that charge for a long time and we appreciate we think it's appropriate to be here uh, today. The discovery last month of the buried remains of 215 Indigenous children on the grounds of a former residential school in Kamloops BC left a searing reminder of the horrific legacy of Indian residential school. It was something that all Canadians responded to, motivated by their grief, calling on their respective governments to take action. I wish that I could say that this was an anomaly and such news will never happen again. Unfortunately, it may not be the case. Preliminary work done here in Ontario by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission has already identified 12 locations of unmarked burial sites in Ontario with varying levels of certainty and detail. We know there are likely more, there's likely more to this story. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission has done important work to bring the truth to light, but we have more work to do. And in searching for these sites, we know that these are reopening wounds, some that have never healed, frankly, um, and bring painful memories to the surface. That's why it's critical that any search and recover efforts are community led, led by Indigenous people and supported with respectful and respect for community protocols and the diversity of cultural practices across Ontario. It's why today I'm proud to be joined by the Premier to announce that our government is investing $10 million to support the necessary work guided by Indigenous elders residential school survivors and community leaders. Let me be perfectly clear to the people of Ontario today. Each phase of this work must be and will be guided by Indigenous communities, Indigenous leaders and Indigenous organizations as well as Métis. And we will ensure that ongoing culturally appropriate mental health supports are available immediately to survivors and affected families and communities at every step of the way. A special shout out to my colleague, Minister Michael Tobolo, who has made great strides to bring culturally responsive, indigenous focused mental health supports, in particular to Northern Ontario and isolated Northern Ontario in cooperation with the Nishnabiaski Nation to provide us with a strong foundation and leverage to deliver wellness support to communities in every region of the province as we endeavor to do this program together. If warranted, um, we will use the resources uh, that the province has at the request of Indigenous leadership and ensure that not only our technical expertise, uh, our capacities in forensics and pathology uh, and mental health support are leveraged, but those of independent providers, many of which are already working with some communities and some groups on the remediation and recovery of known, unknown, and unmarked burial sites. If you'll indulge me for just a moment, I want you to know about my own understanding and experience of the intergenerational trauma inflicted on survivors, community members, uh, and their families. After living in isolated and remote First Nations communities across Canada, most of it here in Northwestern Ontario, I have unfortunately seen the long lasting impacts of Indian residential school. 
And so it, it is today, not just with a deeply professional, but personal commitment to the leaders who are here today and speaking, but to the indigenous people of Treaty 3 and lands all across this province to move forward. Indigenous communities have waited too long for action to bring justice to the little ones who didn't make it home from school. Our government is proud to come to the table with funding and a plan to make real progress in the search for these children, to bring justice and closure to Indigenous communities across the province. It's important to acknowledge that we are not starting from scratch. Existing provincial records and survivor testimonies from previous inquiries will be honored as we move forward, helping us to inform our next steps and minimize the re-traumatization of survivors who have courageously shared their truth. Work of this nature is specialized and technical. We will be working in partnership with survivors, elders, leaders, and communities. And our government, the government of Ontario, will ensure that technical experts, such as archeologists, forensic specialists, and historians are available to support communities. We anticipate that many will want this process to move as quickly as possible. However, we will, must also ensure that the process is respectful and thorough. To that end, we are offering communities additional pieces of support. Dr. Michael Polanin, Ontario's chief forensic pathologist, has led exercises such as this around the world, and he'll be able to assist us in this process. We will also leverage the capacity and experience of Dr. Dirk Heyer, Ontario's chief coroner. Their expertise will help ensure that this critical work is done to the highest standard possible and rooted in a respectful and informed approach by in the Indigenous people of Ontario. Initial site identification will be the first step in what is anticipated to be much more a much more extensive process. And we're committed to seeing this work through to completion in collaboration with our Indigenous partners. While some communities might wish to undertake this work Immediately, there will, there will be some that may not be able to do so. The wishes of affected families and Indigenous communities will be respected and approaches will be flexible and community driven. We will work with all of you to address this matter. Over the next few years, we will work together to identify, protect and maintain Indian residential school cemeteries and unmarked burial sites when we can we will appropriately commemorate these sites and the lives lost and re repatriate the remains of children for families to bring closure and move forward, should that be the wish of affected families and communities. And we will explore ways to work together to increase public awareness and deepen our collective understanding of the histories and the harms of the Indian residential school system through a principled and collaborative approach, we will begin to uncover the truth, to rectify past wrongs and meaningfully contribute to the sometimes difficult work of true and full reconciliation. I'm thankful to the Indigenous leadership who join us here today, and I look forward uh, to hearing from them in a moment. I want to thank Grand Chief Kavanaugh, Grand Council Treaty 3, Teresa Strenlin of, uh, of Métis Nation here uh, in Kenora. Chief Mark Hill of Six Nations of the Grand River who's joining us virtually today and other Indigenous leaders here and that I joined earlier this morning to share in this news. I also want to mention and appreciate the letter that I received from MPP Saul Mamakwa in Kiwaitnung. Saul, I know we spoke in the legislature four not long ago. The contents of your letter I think you'll find are respected and reflected in the work that was well underway the moment we found out of the horrific tragedy in Kamloops. I look forward to working with you on this. I also want to acknowledge the words of support from other um, chiefs, Ontario Regional Chief Roseanne Archibald, who called for this uh, process, former Grand Chief of Anishinaabeaski Nation, and my friend Alvin Fiddler. I'm honored to have your support in this plan. We will continue to rely on your knowledge and experience as we move forward. I want to thank everybody for being here today and making this announcement so special. My name is Greg Rickford. I'm the member of Provincial Parliament for the Great Kenora Rainy River 
and the Treaty 3 lands. It's a privilege and an honor to serve my constituents. And it is humbly that I accept the responsibility to work with Indigenous peoples to recover, remediate, and move forward uh, on this difficult chapter in the history of the Indigenous peoples here in Ontario. Thank you, miigwech, miawan. I'll now turn it over to Grand Chief Francis Cavanaugh. Morning, everyone. Mr. Miigwech, uh, I'd like to thank uh, our uh, Honorable Minister, Greg Rickford, for introducing myself, also uh, inviting me to, be, to take part in today's uh, announcement. So, coming in and go, Kebe Asige Ninige, Gimas, Kinak, Kem, Scott Tegabo, Keoe, Mitteu is in. Josh. <clears throat> Slightly. Okay, I just uh, lost my train of thought. Anyways, I'm uh, glad to be here. You know, I'd like to also acknowledge and uh, say to me which to our elder, Howard Kupanes from uh, Notikomeguanyang. You know, I um, appreciate the uh, his words during his invocation and a song to commemorate uh, the lost souls in 215 and the subsequent uh, remains that have been found in Manitoba and in Saskatchewan. And I'm sure there will be lost, I mean, lots more found. Anyways, I have a prepared statement. Good morning, everyone. Miigwech for being here today. After the news of the 215 children found in Kamloops, our nation is heartbroken. This news has affected our people in deeply profound ways. While we already knew this occurred in Canada, it is incredibly painful to relive, especially for survivors and our families who have bravely been telling us the truth for decades. But truth be told, it has impacted every First Nation member throughout this land we call Canada. I have spoken to several people over the past few weeks of the un unmarked graves on residential school properties here in Treaty 3. I have also heard of a desire to search for our children to bring all of our children home. Survivors have told us firsthand of children being buried in secret, off school grounds, or even cremated. We can work to locate these buried on school grounds and the surrounding areas. I have had early discussions with elders and knowledge keepers as to how best we can conduct this effort. It is important that our efforts are done in a proper way to respect the spirits of the children. I will continue to have ongoing discussions with the nation to make sure no further harm occurs to the survivors, our families, our people, and our communities. Many Canadians were shocked, perhaps shamed, with the news, and I encourage them to learn about the real history of residential schools and of many other forms of colonial violence inflicted upon our people. Starting with the territory they reside in, which is the nation of Treaty 3. I acknowledge the government of Ontario for taking steps beside us in our search to face the realities of residential school. This requires people to admit uncomfortable throat, throats, throats, and the burial of children in unmarked graves is a Christ is a is a Christ crime against humanity. And I would deem the perpetrators of these atrocities less human than us. As a society, we can no longer hide behind the past or deny the realities of what happened in Canada. We must admit the crimes of the past and actively work towards ensuring 
that is it's no longer very true truth. The survivors, our children, our families, I want to offer my support and that you want to, if you are ready to, please reach out to someone to talk to. We cannot suffer in silence any longer and it is important that we work through this together. Jimmy Wedge for this day. Also, I just wanna share a little bit of personal, how I'm personally impacted by this. I myself did not attend residential school, but I had five, four of my sisters and one brother older than me that attended. And it pains me to have to relive their experiences. I once watched one of my sisters talk to a federal negotiator during a lunch break. She talked about her, her residential school experience with this uh, non-native uh, federal negotiator. And I don't know what they were saying. I was never brave enough to ask either, but uh, both of them were sobbing, you know, and, and it pains me to think, think about that today, you know, and, uh, and uh, that's why I say that uh, not only survivors are impacted, it's all of First Nations people in Canada are impacted by, by this discovery. With that, uh, Jimmy Wetch, again, to the government for uh, making this happen today. How oh, Miwetch. Big Rich, uh, we'll get you to Kavanaugh for those words, uh, powerful. I'd like to introduce Regional Counselor for the Northwestern Ontario Métis Community, Teresa Stenland. I just wanted to begin by acknowledging we're meeting on the traditional lands of the Anishinaabe of Treaty 3 and the Métis Nation. I also wanted to acknowledge and thank uh, Elder Howard Kopanis for the opening prayer and song, Shinobuch. I also want to acknowledge Premier Doug Ford, the Honorable Greg Rickford, Agichata Francis Kavanaugh, Chief Mark Hill, and all those community leaders, guests, and others who are present here today or, may, or, may, or that may be watching this announcement. Today, I am thinking of the 215 Indigenous children that tragically lost their lives and the hundreds more that lost their lives in the 130 residential schools across Canada. Sadly, so many in the Métis Nation have close family members who attended, attended residential and day school institutions. My own family has been impacted by residential Recording in progress. Minister Rickford, your announcement today of an initial investment of $10 million over three years and a commitment of immediate funding, which will be guided and led by Indigenous decision making, is another step along the reconciliation and Ontario's commitment to establish strong, collaborative, and mutually respectful relationships with Indigenous peoples in Ontario. It acknowledges the huge negative impact these schools had and continue to have within our communities. And it charts a course of action to begin to address them. Thank you for your commitment to the Indigenous peoples of Ontario. Minister Rickford, I'd like to present these moccasins to you on behalf of the citizens of the Northwestern Ontario Métis community as a gesture of appreciation for walking towards 
reconciliation. So miigwech. Merci, merci, miigwech, thank you. Miigwech, Teresa, for your words. I'd like to take this time to introduce Chief Mark Hill of Six Nations of the Grand River. He'll be accompanied by his Indian Residential School survivors. Chief Hill. Scano, Sagon, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Six Nations of the Grand River Territory. I would first like to start by acknowledging and thanking some of our survivors of the Mohawk Institute who are with us here today. I'd also like to recognize and acknowledge the opening prayer and song as we go and discuss further such a difficult topic. Also joining us here today and want to recognize Mayor Kevin Davis, Davis of the City of Brantford and MPP Will Bama for Brantford Frank. I want to take a moment to bring a historical reality to life. Imagine your home life with your children. You raise them in your family, in your community, in your language, and with your culture and tradition and values. In the day-to-day -day life of family, your children learn what it means to be who they are, and they learn their identity and where they come from. But one day, Officials representing the government show up at your front door and take your children away from you. They're put in a faraway institution, like example, what we're standing in front of today, where there is much misery, neglect, and abuse. You will not see them for a very long time, if ever again. Some of your children die, and some you don't even know what happened. Their bodies are not brought back to you, but instead they are buried in unmarked graves and you never again know what happened. This was the experience of all too many Indigenous families and all of our communities remember. After the 215 children were found at the Kamloops Residential School, a full investigation into all such burial sites across Canada has become critical. At Six Nations, this has been a bitter renewal of grief for all of us. We too had our children taken away to a residential school, the Mohawk Institute, also known as the Mush Hole, again, which we are standing in front of today. This was one of the, uh, the oldest, longest running of the residential schools operating for 142 years. The intent was the same, to change us, to make us other than who we are. The National Center for Truth and Reconciliation has documented evidence of 52 children who died here, but we don't know how many others are out there or most importantly, where they are buried. We know that there were 46 children from Northern First Nations communities sent here, but again, we don't know what happened to them. The Mohawk Institute was unregulated and unaccountable from the start. As the TRC said, the federal government was responsible for neglecting the health and safety of children. This failure to establish and enforce adequate standards, coupled with the failure to adequately fund the schools, resulted in unnecessarily high death rates at residential schools. But this failure of the federal government was built on an earlier crime. The forcible removal of our children from their parents, families, and communities. To this very day, at Six Nations, there are whispers within our community about our missing children and where they might have been buried. It is past time that we find them and bring justice. Six Nations is adamant that we must do this right. And with the best technical expertise and equipment available. I'm so pleased that the Premier of Ontario Doug Ford has made today's announcement and is willing to lead the country 
and taking the right steps because it is critical that we work together. When it comes to the mush hole, the word complex does not begin to capture the essence, scope, and magnitude of the investigation required to search for the missing bodies of all children buried on the ground, then grounds of the Mohawk Institute. The Mohawk Institute burned down twice, changed lo locations, and was associated with substantial farmlands of well over 350 acres at least, on which the children were made to endure hard labor. In recent decades, nearby developments have also encroached upon related properties, which raises additional concerns about the feasibility of locating certain possible possible burial sites of our children who went missing so long ago. We must work with other First Nations communities in this process, as many of them sent, also sent their children here. We don't know how many children in total we're talking about, and again, it is essential that we find out. TRE, the TRC also said that there were 51 children missing, but 215 bodies were found. The question is how many will be found here? After reading a recent CBC article, I am disturbed and angered that it seems some companies may even be looking to take advantage of First Nations communities in the search for missing children. We must not allow those offering false services for their own profit to take advantage of survivors or our community. Make no mistake, Six Nations is adamant that there is no other option but to do this right with the best credible technology and experts. And again, they must be led by indigenous communities and survivors. That is why we must approach this from a death investigative process. And we have called on the commissioner of the Ontario Provincial Police, the solicitor general, the attorney general, and the chief's coroner's office. And further, why we have sought the support of the Premier of Ontario and the Government of Ontario. Precedent has been set. Bodies have been found on the IRS property and now by law, all other properties must be searched. Deaths have been reported and there are reasonable grounds for these investigations as there is no other option. With the Government of Ontario committing to a full investigation of burial sites, Six Nations is encouraged in the hope that we will find all of our missing children and bring to light what exactly happened to each of them. In closing, we express our solidarity with everyone affected by the recent discovery or haunted by the intergenerational wounds, and we will continue pressing forward to protect all children of today and provide a better future for the coming faces of tomorrow. I commend again Premier Ford, Minister Rickford, and all of our partners. And finally, I would like to again say nyawa to all of our survivors for being with us here today. We honor you and your courage has brought us all together. We cannot skip justice and just go straight to commemoration. Commemoration is important, but that is not why we are here today. We are here to seek truth in the pursuit of justice and that every child matters. Thank you and Yahweh. Thank you, Chief Mark Hill, for your words. I'd like to uh, take a moment here to uh, say miigwech to Prem Premier Doug Ford. Minister Greg Rickford, the Gitchida, Francis Kavanaugh, the Teresa Stenland, the Chief Mark Hill once again, the Treaty Three Chiefs, Lorraine, Chief Lorraine Copen is sitting behind us. Before we end here, I'd like to just, in honor of the survivors, and to take a moment just of silence here to think about our lost children in Kamloops and the others across Canada.
Miigwech. I'd like to introduce Elder Howard Kopenes for a closing prayer. Our teachings, our elders say, when we come together to talk about life, to talk about our children, to talk about our journey ahead, we do not close our gatherings. We just say miigwech until we meet again. And it's the, one of the teachings that has been with us for many, many generations. So at this time, I would just like to share with you a miigwech song that will help us to remember today and also go forward in a good way. Uh -huh, miigwech, miigwech song. Miigwech, Howard, for, for the song. That concludes our announcement today. And media and question and answers start now. A reminder, if you have a question, to please use the raise hand function. Um, and our first question comes from Randy Rath with CHCHTV. Yeah, hi. Thank you for taking my question. Um, I'm wondering, the, the Catholic Church isn't represented here today. Is there any place for them in this? And do any of the um, Native or the, the Indigenous uh, spokespersons have any message for them? I'm not, not sure who you're addressing that, that question to, but, but uh, I'll, I'll take a, a crack at it. I, I was a signatory to the Indian Residential School on behalf of thousands of survivors across Northern Ontario. At that time, the, the Catholic Church was involved in uh, bringing elements to the agreement, but I think other political leaders, and I won't speak for Indigenous leaders, uh, some of them are here today and I think would want to make comment on that, but I absolutely think they should become uh, an integral part uh, of this process to the extent of, of their involvement. Which, uh, Greg, I guess uh, from our perspective as uh, First Nations people, I believe that the, the Catholic Church needs to come forward and make efforts to bring the Pope to Canada for a formal apology to all First Nations across Canada. I believe it's incumbent on them to do that. You know, like I said before, and it, for me, it's uh, very painful to be up here talking about what happened to our people. You know, there's going to be more remains found I'm certain of that, and, and the perpetrators, even I've been reading, 
different accounts from people that are still alive and in pain, being re-traumatized and stuff like that, they still see their perpetrators who are still alive and still they haven't been accountable. They haven't been made accountable for what they've done, you know, in creating uh, some call cultural genocide. But uh, for us, it's genocide. That's what took place. They wanted to wipe us out. That's why I say those people that uh, did these atrocities, you know, they were very dehumanizing. That's why I say, you know, to me, the perpetrators were less of a human being than us. That's what I believe in. I mean, why would another human being do what they did to our children, to our people? So I need, so I mean, they need to be held accountable. They need to come forward and, and try bring bring the Pope to come about and make that official apology to the people of uh, First Nations of uh, Canada. With that, uh, to me, which for allowing me to say a few words, how me which. Randy, do you have a follow up? Yes, I do. Um, I, I'm wondering if the uh, if if criminal charges clearly uh, horrific crimes took place in these schools. Um, do do we anticipate any criminal charges to be to come out of any of these investigations? Well, look through through the Indian resident following from the Indian residential school agreement. Obviously, there were a number of processes uh, that uh, addressed issues of of abuse uh, and other kinds of activities. What we've announced here today is focusing on providing support to an indigenous led uh, decision making process uh, to gather information to support uh, forensic and pathological information to bring a closure and a new beginning uh, to the Indigenous peoples of Ontario, survivors, their families, and their communities. As, as uh, Chief, Chief Hill, who spoke so eloquently uh, today, and I had discussed uh, a couple of days ago in, in helping to put pieces of this together, uh, it would be uh, available for the communities to understand and assess the information as it comes to light. Uh, but the province's role, obviously, in a federally administered program uh, in partnership with other entities, our interest and our role and responsibility in this today, as has been said by a number of Indigenous leaders, is to simply support them to leverage our technology and our capacity. I'm sorry, I had my mask on there. Um, in, in an effort to identify, investigate, protect, and commemorate. Um, this uh, horrific um, occurrence uh, from the Indian Residential School legacy. Thank you. Your next question comes from Laura Stone with the Globe and Mail. Hi, Laura. Hi, Minister Rickford. Um, I wanted to ask you about the timeline. So this is a three-year plan, but there's no firm timeline on when the work will actually start or finish. It also speaks to the need to follow the community's wishes. So I'm wondering if you have any more specifics on, on when you think this work will start and how confident are you that you'll be able to achieve consensus to get it done? Well, uh, immediate and confident. Uh, we've worked closely under the leadership of Premier Ford with Indigenous leadership, the Chiefs of Ontario. We've worked through some challenging uh, issues and turned them into opportunities. I don't see any reason to believe that we uh, won't be able to do anything different uh, in this situation. Phase one and phase two um, provides for immediate funding. It focuses on trauma-informed, culturally relevant uh, and responsive mental health, uh, health and wellness supports. Um, in addition, um, to consolidate uh, the work that Ontario has been doing in response to the Truth and Reconciliation uh, Report in these regards specifically, and it's not limited to recommendations 71 through 77 uh, in the digitization, uh, uh, archival records, and gathering various other information, which I believe will be foundational to the work that Indigenous-led groups uh, will um, endeavor uh, to start uh, immediately. 
That's why we've mobilized a significant re resource at the front end of this. And frankly, Laura, um, we've left uh, this um, opportunity uh, down the road to understand what the most appropriate comm uh, commemorative um, activities would look and feel like. So these resources are committed and intended to be immediate, to respond to the work that's going on across the country and even here um, in Ontario, and especially as Chief Hill and their community um, par excellence is, le is leading a process uh, there uh, in the identification, investigation, and ultimately the protection uh, and com commemor commor com commemorating um, uh, as information becomes available, uh, their findings. Laura, do you have a follow-up? Thank you. Um, my follow-up is for Premier Ford. You mentioned in your remarks you didn't want to wait for the federal government to move on this. Uh, what exactly did you mean by that? Were they asking the province to wait for more consultations? Do you think it's taken too long? Can you just expand on why Ontario has decided to, to move ahead right now? Do you know, Laura, this is federal jurisdiction, uh, but I'm not going to wait to support uh, our Indigenous community. Uh, we've built an incredible relationship uh, with all Indigenous leaders across uh, the province. And I've always said from day one, we're going to have their back. And I'll never break that promise. I'll always have their, their back. I'll always support them. But the atrocities, uh, the tragedy that's happened in, in, in the past, we have to investigate it. Uh, we have to support uh, the investigation uh, led through the Indigenous community. And uh, we're, we're going to make sure we, we go go to the full extent and uh, make sure that they, they have the support that they they need. I, I just, you know, I just don't have time to, to wait for the federal government. Uh, we should be acting on it immediately and so should the federal government be acting on it e immediately. But uh, we have a great relationship. I'm very, very uh, thankful and grateful that uh, we've built this uh, relationship through Minister Rickford that's done an incredible job through chiefs right across uh, the, the province and uh, and through uh, regional chief uh, Roseanne Archibald. We have an incredible relationship with Chief Mark Hill, uh, so many, um, and, and we're going to continue that bond and, and move forward and, and make sure um, this is part of reconciliation. Laura, if yeah. I could just add, uh, we, we've, we have become concerned about the resources allocated by the federal government and the pressures uh, that will be on it. We take responsibility uh, for the relationship that we have with the Indigenous peoples of Ontario uh, to support them in these efforts. And the pressures on that program um, uh, led us to um, commit new resources, um, additional resources. Um, for this important, uh, this important work. After this um, announcement, I'll be writing my provincial counterparts and hopefully we'll be able to join uh, in a meeting and start to uh, put the contours to, to a framework that other provinces can perhaps use and learn from because we believe what we're announcing here today is leadership uh, on this matter. Indigenous leaders have spoken and we'd like to move forward with them and our provincial counterparts in making sure that this work is done, uh, respecting the desires of the Indigenous peoples across Canada, um, and that will happen uh, very quickly. Your next question comes from Holly Mackenzie Sutter with the Canadian Press. Holly, if you could just unmute your mic. Hi, question for uh, Minister Rickford. I wanted to ask you how you arrived at the figure of 10 million for um, this process and if there could be more allocated if, um, if that's required as the work progresses. Well, thank you. Um, you know, this is never an exact science, but, but in, our, um, in building out the work and understanding the kinds of activities, realizing that there um, is um, uh, internal capacity within the provincial government. I mentioned the, um, uh, the, the coroner's office um, and uh, our capacity in pathology. Um, the experts out there that are al already doing work, we believe that this was a reasonable amount uh, of resource 
um, and we vetted that, socialized it, if you will, with other Indigenous leaders, and we committed um, to make much of this at the front end, uh, focused on trauma, health and wellness supports, and the immediate uh, physical activities associated um, and technology requirements to support this. It can be um, available as we move forward um, to understand if additional resources are required, but we will call on the federal government um, at every turn to ensure that their uh, partnership uh, in the province of Ontario is as focused as what we've rolled out here um, today. And we'll make an ongoing assessment of our resource uh, commitment uh, as required. Um, in addition to that, I've had an opportunity to speak with my friend and colleague, uh, work closely with her, Minister McLeod, on some of the commemorative um, elements of this, which will be down the road once we understand uh, the scope and extent uh, of what this work uh, has found as difficult as that is to imagine, um, I thank Minister McLeod for her leadership and, and desire uh, to work with my ministry uh, where other resources may be committed uh, as part of Ontario's heritage. Thank you. Follow up? Yeah, I'm just wondering if um, the search might extend beyond sites that are designated as Indian residential school grounds, like if there are other um, possible burial grounds that aren't a part of those official sites, could um, could the work extend there? The answer is yes. Um, much of this information um, is uh, is 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 within the knowledge of survivors and Indigenous leaders. And today, what we're providing is an opportunity moving forward for that information uh, to come forward. Um, as you heard uh, Ogichida, Grand Chief uh, Kavanaugh allude to, um, it may be true that there are unmarked graves um, and that they may not be immediately proximal to um, uh, the known 18 Indigenous uh, or Indian residential schools as they were called uh, at, at the time. And that's what this work is intended to focus on as much as the known burial sites um, that some communities uh, have done some well-established work on. Thank you, Holly. Your final questions come from James Murray at Net News Ledger. James, if you could just unmute your mic. Uh, Hi, good James. Morning. Uh, good morning, uh, Minister Rickford. Good morning, Premier Ford. My first question is to Premier Ford. The speed at which you've acted on this is great. This is an important issue. It's good to see Ontario taking leadership. There's two other areas where Ontario may need to be taking leadership. The first one is in the community of Kesheshawan, where the number of people with COVID is skyrocketing. And is Ontario prepared to step in and do some more work in Kesheshawan? Absolutely. Um, you know, Dr. Tian has done a, a great job in, in vaccination of remote uh, immunity. We, we move quickly on that as well. And I want to thank the people from Orange and, and the leaders uh, throughout uh, uh, First Nations communities when we flew in there. Uh, I understand that we have the second doses uh, for the most part done. We're, we're going to be flying in as well to uh, make sure we, we support uh, getting the, the 12 to 17 year olds and anyone else who needs to be vaccinated in case they they, they missed the vaccination, but that, that was so well organized through leadership um, throughout the indigenous communities that we flew into and in Orange and it was, they, they did a, an incredible job. So we're gonna be up there, we're gonna support them in any way we, we can. Um, and we'll, we'll make sure that happens uh, immediately. Matter of fact, I, I think they'll be going very shortly. Follow up. Uh, my, my second question is to both the minister and to the premier. And again, it ties to the speed at which you've acted on the residential schools. Can we see similar speed happen for solving some of the land claim issues that are going on in Treaty 3, in Nikakusa Minikani, in Kakuchiching, and in the other communities? That would help families for reconciliation as well. And it seems to be taking an awful long time. Well, I'm, I'm happy to answer that, James. Uh, in, in fact, maybe to the contrary, uh, respectfully, my friend, um, 
what Indigenous leaders have been talking about uh, since we took government was the uh, quick settlement of some outstanding uh, land claims and flooding claims. Many of those um, have, uh, uh, have been stalled over the past uh, decade uh, since coming to government. We've moved quickly. We recognize that there are others that have complexities to them, uh, some um, involved in uh, court proceedings, uh, but we've made a commitment and it's been clear and we've delivered to Indigenous communities across this province in an unprecedented way, the resolution of many land claims, some of them uh, very large scale, the Williams Treaty comes to mind, something that I had worked on in my previous chapter uh, as a uh, federal member of parliament for Kenora and working with uh, uh, um, Indigenous Affairs uh, federally um, and my regional responsibilities as a minister here in Northern Ontario. We're committed and we will continue uh, to work on these processes expeditiously and as you said, bring closure and reconciliation with respect to land uh, based um, um, claims moving forward. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Good to see you.